I dare you to lie down on a bed of nails like this one, not that one, right? One of those with all the nails sticking straight up, but do you already have one or do I need to make it? You love building things, so go ahead and make one and then lie on it. I don't know why I fall for these challenges. Today we will make a bed of nails and lie on it. Not this bed here. A real one with actual nails. Why do we come up with these ideas? Back in 19-something, when Mari was pregnant with Helena, we built a nail chair and it was a lot of work. The base was about 33 by 33 centimeters. We placed the nail every centimeter, so the chair had nearly a thousand nails. If I remember correctly, it was a medium density fiberboard around one and a half to two centimeters thick. We pre-drilled a hole for each nail to speed things up, then hammered them in individually. This time, I wanted to take a different approach because this one's way bigger. Considering my size, we figured a bed 60 centimeters wide by 1 meter 90 long should be more than enough. I should be able to lie on it and be in full contact with the nails. Using the same one nail per centimeter logic as before, the total would be this times this 11,400 nails. But we'll try a different spacing. One nail every 1.5 centimeters. That's fewer nails. 60 divided by 1.5 gives us 40 nails. And here we'll have 126, which totals 5,040 nails. That number might not convey how many nails there are. Do you have any idea how much 5,040 nails weigh? I don't either. Let's find out. 5.72 grams. Multiply that by 5,040 and we get 28 kilos and 800 grams of nails. And that's just the nails, not the rest of the structure. This is going to be one heavy bed. Now drilling 5,000 holes? I don't think we need to do that again. We could use a laser, but it can't make holes one and a half to two centimeters deep. So I thought of a middle ground solution. This six millimeter thick fiberboard can still be cut nicely with a laser. But if we drill a hole here and insert a nail, the board is too thin to hold the nail, which will act like a lever and bend. The bed wouldn't survive a single night. So here's what we came up with. Use a six millimeter board and then add some spacers underneath. That creates a six millimeter gap. So we place another six millimeter board below that. Now we laser cut the top layer with 5,040 holes. Then you insert the nail from the top layer to the bottom so the head stays beneath like this. This way, we get about 18 millimeters of depth to hold the nail in place. I think that'll give it enough stability. And I must admit, doing the math and sketching everything is fun. Now it's time to get our hands dirty. Danny created a fusion design for the laser cutter. The hole's diameter is slightly smaller than the nail, so it fits snugly and stays firm. We're making the bed in modules, mainly because it wouldn't all fit in the laser cutter and also to make better use of our MDF sheets. There are so many holes that even with the laser, each module made of two wood pieces takes over an hour to cut. After four hours, the machine's tired, but our shoulders are fine. It's beautiful seeing everything so perfectly aligned. Let's glue it all together now so we can insert the nails. First, we install the spacers, those small pieces that separate one board from the other. The spacers, made from the same 0.236 inch MDF as the boards, were estimated at around 400 for the project. First, I apply super glue to the ends and the center, then I use a polyurethane glue. It expands and sets quickly, perfect for wood, since it's ready to use in just a few minutes. One key is good alignment. If not, the nails will go crooked and look awful. The simple trick is using the nails to help line everything up. Once expanded, the glue foams. Look how cool it looks inside. Now it's all about working with care. Start hammering. Almost done, almost there. Ta da ta da ta da. Da, 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 da. We used 1,040 nails and finished in about 30 minutes compared to four hours for the nail chair. 
Not gonna lie, I have to pause this video now to film the gravity powered cart. Danny and Lucas will finish the rest of the modules. Five thousand and forty nails hammered in. But really, this part is more like the mattress of the bed. We still need to build the actual bed frame. We're making the frame with a type of wood called kumaru. It's so hard that when you drill it, it smokes. To give you an idea. First, we drill a hole 0.118 inches wide, matching the screw's core diameter. Then we drill a second hole 4 millimeters wide through the outer wood. <laughs> that matches the outer part of the screw. That way the screw passes through the first layer and grips only on the second one. Between the wooden pieces, we're going to use polyurethane glue again. The plan is to build a rectangular bed with three cross braces and six legs. We think it's too heavy and the middle might not hold without these extra legs. When my grandfather was a child in the 1940s, he worked at the Patente Bed Factory in Villa Elvio Piedade. In his time, there were no screwdrivers, no batteries, none of that. I think his job was even tougher than what we're doing now. And yes, I said it right, when he was a kid. Back then, kids worked. I think it's holding up well. Before testing this thing, let's understand the logic behind a bed of nails. If you only have one nail and apply pressure, all that force goes directly into that one nail. But if you have more nails, like here for example we have 16, your body weight is distributed among them. So the force per nail is 16 times smaller, which means it's harder to pop a balloon on 16 nails than just one. And yeah, it wasn't great that it popped. And of course, if you lie down on a bed with 5,000 nails, your weight spreads across all of them. I, I won't use uh, all 5,000 for the full bed, but I'll use around two to 3,000. Uh, I weigh about uh, 85 kilos. If I divide that by 2,000 nails, that's 42 grams per nail, which is very little. But we have two issues here. First, we increase the spacing compared to the original nail chair. That means each nail supports more weight. Second, and worse, we discovered that the nails aren't all the same size. If you look closely, some nails stick out more than others. That means those will take the weight first. At first, they bear all the pressure. And if the surface is hard at that spot, all the weight concentrates there, which is bad. So what now? Do we trim the nail tips to even them out? No, let's roll with it. Yeah, it's not that bad, right? Better than this thing here. This is a basic test to see if the weight distribution is reasonably even. Using styrofoam, a brick and a little brain power. So, how's the styrofoam underneath? Kind of meh. Maybe we pushed the test a bit too far. If this were my back, I'd probably end up with a dotted tattoo or something. Another test. Let's toss a piece of fruit to see if it sticks to the nails, which would be a bad sign. I'm not gonna throw it too hard. That would be overkill. That wasn't quite what we expected. Where's Mari when you need her? I like oil and nails, but I don't even know anymore. Uh, as you saw, it's a very safe bed. It doesn't do much to the styrofoam or the apple. It acts like a machine gun. Let's do this. Don't try this at home, but I have to try it. Let's start by sitting on the bed of nails and see what happens. It's uncomfortable, but manageable. The nail density is about half what we had in that first nail chair. You feel a few pokes, but it's fine to wear old pants like these, which are already torn. Sitting works. Uh, can I lie down? I can't do it without something under my head. It's too round. Some part of it will hit a nail, and that nail will have to support the full weight of my hefty head. I'll place a piece of styrofoam here to protect my head. Let's go. 
I like this shirt though. Let's grab an older one. This is not new, but it's best to wrap up a bit for now. There's no way around it now. Let's go. The hardest part is settling in here. No, you can't use your hands properly. you it feels like my back is that piece of styrofoam we smashed with a hammer it's pretty much the same as lying on the floor the factory didn't make nails all the same size we didn't plan it this way but funny enough it's kind of like how a knife works if it were just one nail it would act like a sharp knife all the force would be focused on a very thin line in a small area that much force in such a tiny space, that's what cuts. If the knife's dull, the pressure spreads out over a bigger area and won't cut. That's what's happening here. It's like lying on a dull knife. It hurts, but it doesn't cut. What if we break a brick on my chest? Before my back turns into a pin cushion, just a quick reminder. Oh man, how do I lift this without using my hand? We're releasing two books this semester. Mysteries of the Universe, a gorgeous intro to astronomy, and the Big Book of Biology, part of our series with content covering all of middle and most of high school. It'll stick with you through your school years. More info is in the link below. Let's break that brick now. Hold on, let's go. A face shield is on and a board is used to hold the brick. Are you going to use your brain or your strength? Which way do you prefer? I prefer the smart way. All right, let's do it the smart way. Ah, now it's easier to lie down. Gloves make all the difference. Oh, hey, Danny. Oh, my God. Why do we come up with these ideas? You can go. Wow. This is Manuel Du Mundo. Danny, you really didn't hold back on. Look at that. Wow. If this isn't worth a like, I don't know what is. Huh? If you enjoy these crazy challenges, we once bought a fruit that removes the sour taste from food. You can drink vinegar and think you're sipping juice. It's really wild. Thank you.